The audit was done in, in February of this year, and uh, I'm sure the findings are back, but we haven't heard about it. I mean, we contributed, the Gibraltar Mental Welfare Society contributed to the audit, as did other NGOs and obviously a lot of professionals. I don't know if some of them have uh, got some feedback. We certainly haven't, and I think it's something that needs to be made public because then the public is aware of what needs to be done and can push for it. The Mental Welfare Society contributed to the audit, so can you tell us some of the areas of concern you highlighted? Um, I think some of the areas is um, easy access to, to help. Uh, we get time and time again, we get the feedback from, from people, from service users and from relatives of service users that access is not easy, that uh, they call certain numbers and then perhaps they don't get the help, the, the forthcoming, the help that they need is not forthcoming. Um, they find it difficult to navigate the system and it's a bit of a battle to get what you need. So I think this is one of the concerns that, that we raised, yes. And you've also mentioned uh, care in the community as an issue of concern. Oh, absolutely, yes. Care in the community, there isn't enough of that. Um, we need more people employed in the system or we need better uh, use of resources, uh, but certainly the care that needs to be there is not there. You say you've been approached by an increasing number of people who don't know who to turn to. Is the situation getting worse or are more people speaking up? I think possibly the, the people are speaking out more, whereas uh, having a mental health problem was something that people kept quiet and hidden and secret, which they still do to some extent. Uh, but I think more people are now prepared to, to speak um, more openly about it. And they, they come to us because sometimes they don't know who to turn to. They have turned to the, to the official help, but sometimes they don't get what is required. And then they're a bit of a, you know, they're stuck and they come to us. And the only thing we can do is point them in, 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 in the right direction, but sometimes they, they still don't get what they need. Um, so I think we need more investment in the system. I think we need to have an, a system which is, which is easy to access, which is very well coordinated, which presents, which has a holistic approach to, to people, um, especially people who, who have a combination of mental health and physical health problems. You've described this as a person-centred approach. What exactly does this entail? A person-centred approach, uh, briefly, uh, would entail a written plan, uh, which would be, um, which would be uh, contributed to by the, you know, the psychiatrist, a medical doctor, a social worker, um, whoever needs to be involved in the, you know, in the, in the help and the care that needs to be pro provided for this patient and uh, service user and something that is written down that people can be accountable for, that has objectives that can be easily accessed by any medical professional. That's something that, that people come across to, you know, that, that you talk to one um, department and then you talk to another department and this department doesn't know what the other department is doing or what is supposed to happen with that particular service user. So I think we need to coordinate the resources that are there, some of which are very good resources, some very good professionals working in the system, but I don't think we're making the most of the system.